Good morning. Afternoon. Good afternoon. Thank you for being here. There's a pretty poignant uh, message from the Lord that I wanted to share with you today. Um, because there's so much worry. And I think this one just hit it on the head and then something from the diary. This is from, this first one is a message is from A Call to Trust, the book that the Lord inspired, um, page 137. My people, soon I will be coming into my time. These times are laden with suffering, but much is yet to come. So many suffer as a result of sins of others. Many earthly saints will walk forward into martyrdom. Tremendous will be the wrath of God on those who destroy life at any time, for they are a brood of hideous savages in the eyes of God. Woe to those who mislead and confuse the faithful, for they are provoking his wrath. A henna awaits them. All must repent because of their own sinfulness and be reconciled with God. Come to me. I will never leave you. Be not afraid or confused. Come to me in reconciliation. Then come and eat with me. I am your strength in the bread of life. That is my answer to all, especially to those who have difficulty in believing. Now, right off the bat, we know that we have a God of great, unfathomable mercy, and that's why he came into this time, this time that you and I are living in, this millennium. So if you have had an abortion, if you had been a silent bystander and not given someone the right advice, about abortion or end of life issues. End of life issues. Sickness doesn't mean that you're not worth anything to God or to society anymore. It's only when Jesus, when God says, when the Trinity says, come home to me, that is the appropriate time. It's not in the control of man to give or to take life ever. If you are questioning why the heart is, of God is in such torment and why people are suffering so much, it's due to the sin of abortion and the end of life euthanasia, taking life with, with no regard. And so many times God speaks to this, but most specifically, the Lord gave me to understand one of the things that is, is causing God, the main thing causing God to grieve and Our Lady is abortion. If you have had an abortion or you know someone who's had an abortion, we know that we have a merciful God and we must come to him in reconciliation and ask God's forgiveness. Remember what Jesus told St. Faustina, the greater the sinner, the greater the mercy. So there's hope for all of us. Why are they not devastated in hearing this message? It, it's, it's heartbreaking. It's hard to hear. But we are not broken because we have a God of great love, of great mercy, a God who is a God of life. It isn't over until God says it's over. Yeah, we're in the end times. The end of times being so easy and people doing whatever they have or worshiping whatever they want, you know, the God in the trees, the God that's in the grass, the God that's in a crystal, the God, whatever God, that isn't the only true God. There's only one true God. There's only one Jesus. There's not your Jesus and that person's Jesus and that, and they all think differently. There's one God. God laid out the path. He made it very clear. We have the Ten Commandments. We have the new. Love God and love your family from the New Testament. Love God with all your heart and soul and mind and body and love your neighbor. The second part of what the Lord put on my heart that was 
so um, grievous to him was the desecration of the human body. He didn't go into all of that, but we can only imagine. We only have to look around on a summertime beach um, to see way too much, way too much. Even, even the way people are dressing today. It's hard to find decent clothes too. Everything sticks to you. <laughs> it's, like you, you. it's hard to find a pair of slacks that, you know, you can comfortably bend down in. Or shirts that are long enough and high enough, you know, respectable, decent. We are going to have to take extra measures in our times. We are going to have to stand on the strongest foundation that we have, and that's our God, Jesus Christ. We are going to have to press forward and press on with great unfathomable hope because God is doing something. And he's doing something magnificent. Oh, what can I say? <laughs> I need some more coffee. God is doing something magnificent. And so we know we can have great hope in him because we know he is a God of life. And this is our great hope that he will never abandon us, he will never leave us. Yep, we're gonna get into some very difficult situations, but this is the time, this is a fabulous time actually. It's an amazing time because it's, an, it's a time where we can stand up and fight the fight for our faith. This is what God's doing, you know, Jesus, I trust in you. Well, now he's saying to each one of us, how much do you trust in me? Do you trust me just in the quietness of your own room? Do you trust me when family and friends are with you? Do you trust me when you're out in society? And if so, then we cannot be afraid, we must not be afraid to speak the truth of who Jesus is, our God, in the way of the Lord. Following Jesus is not an easy path at all, but it's the most glorious, it's unmatched by anything in the world that is beautiful or fun or nothing compares to the greatness of God and what God can do in every human life. Nothing can compare to the awesome magnificence that is God, nothing, there's no joy, there's nothing in the world that can compare to his love and his presence in us and with us. God is with us. God is moving among us. He hasn't left. He hasn't left his job being on the throne as the ruler. God is with us and God loves us. And now it's time for all of us in these days to show God how much we love him. And just like he said, some are paying with their lives, literally, and we know that. But when the time comes, when the moment comes to you to stand up and defend Christ, to defend life, to vote for life, to make those critical decisions, you better make the right decision. We all better make the right decision because we can see how quickly decline comes. To where today, there's a great confusion of what people are, man, woman, thing. There's, I, I heard last, I heard there's like 30 different things you can call a person. I don't wanna think that much. I just wanna say, ma'am, or a mister, or a miss, or missus. That's all. If you're confused, look inside your pants. Right away tells you. <laughs> Just the way God made you, that's who you are, that's what you are. Yeah, there's sickness in the world. And we're called to have mercy. We're called to have mercy for people that are confused. But we're called to speak the truth. And when we don't, mayhem happens. And this is the garbage that we have to live with. I'm going to say, someone asked me recently, what are you going to do, Catherine? 
What are you going to do when people come to the shrine and people who believe they don't know what they are, they're men or women or whatever, and they want to go into the women's bathroom and men want to, women want, uh -uh -uh, ain't going to happen. Not here. I have to answer to God for what goes on here. And so do you, if you see something. This is your house. This is your father's house. You're just as responsible of, of it as me. And so if there is this kind of confusion, what I would do is have one bathroom. I will have someone standing outside of it, ready to clean it after each person. And one by one, we'll use the bathroom if we need it. But there isn't going to be people walking in and out of other people. <laughs> Men's bathrooms, women's bathrooms. and mm -mm. We know who the master of confusion is. We know who that master is, and it's not our master. Our master is Jesus Christ. Our master is Almighty God. And we are led by the Spirit, the very breath of God, to do what is good, what is right, and what is holy. Is it a fight? Hell yeah. We're in for a battle. We're in a battle. But we're strong. We're strong. Who could be against us? God is with us. We may not agree, and that's okay. We're called to love each other. People have beliefs, whatever it is, but we know the truth. We have the truth. It's been ingrained in us for the most part. And we cannot trust everything that we hear, even in the church. We know what God teaches, and this is what we have to follow. We know what the truth is and what God teaches. We look to our hierarchy, yes. But we have to be on guard because it's not perfect. We have a dichotomy and a battle going on in our own church. All the churches across the world. All religions. But our focus is here in the Catholic Church. And we hear the message that Jesus sent. Woe to those that lead people astray, the people of God astray. There's a tremendous responsibility. Deep within our hearts, in our hearts, and our souls, where the Spirit of God resides, where the Holy Spirit resides. God gives each one of us the ability to know right from wrong. When you lead a sacramental life, the body and the, the reconciliation of Christ transfiguring us all the time, day by day as we go along, and we say a prayer to the Lord, in other words, whatever it is, the rosary, the chaplet, just an invocation, lifting your heart up to God. He steers us through things. He will put a check in your spirit if you are going off the beaten path of the Lord, off the road of the cross. If you're off, he's going to give you a sense of something. I shouldn't, this isn't what I should be doing or saying. Or he'll give you this peace that even in the most difficult of situations, the Lord will help you without using your eyes, your nose, your mouth, especially in your ears. God will guide you through the time. And it will be all right. That's why we don't have to be afraid. God is with us. That's why we have to receive the sacraments with a clean heart, reconciliation, Holy Communion, say our prayer, we'll be together come before God in the blessed sacrament when we're confused, when we're worried, when we don't know what to do. We come to the Lord. This is what we do. Notebook 2, entry 903 and 4. St. Faustina says first, I am coming to know God's greatness more and more and to rejoice in him. I remain unceasingly with him in the depths of my heart. See, that's what we need to do. When you're afraid, when you're confused, when you have decisions to make, when you just don't know, be quiet. Be quiet. And take some time to be with the Lord before making decisions, before speaking. Whatever the case may be, go to the Lord. Open your heart to the Lord. Tell him whatever's in your heart. Just like St. Therese, you don't have to be a rocket scientist. You can be the most humble, the most simple, the most ignorant, the sinful one, whatever it is. Open your heart to the Lord. He'll speak to you. It is my own soul that I most easily find God, she says. She continues, during my meditation, I heard these words. My daughter, 
You give me most glory by patiently submitting to my will. And you win for yourself greater merit than that which any fast or mortification could ever gain for you. When she surrenders, when she submits to the Lord, when she opens her heart to the Lord, he opens his heart and he says, your will be done. Why? How could you say that? You can say it because you know that love is so profound. There's no greater love. So you can easily say, your will be done. If this is what my life, this is what I'm going through, thy will be done. And find joy in it too. You will. Know, my daughter, that if you submit your will to mine, you draw upon yourself my special delight. This sacrifice is pleasing to me and full of sweetness. I take great pleasure in it. There is power in it. Why? Why? I'll tell you why. Because when we submit our will to God, whatever the situation is, terrifying, painful, facing any kind of hardship, uh, adversity, um, even death, we find comfort when we say to the Lord, thy will be done. Because what happens is he walks in, he takes the will, he takes you through it. You will overcome it and be triumphant or you will move on to the Lord, which is where we're all going to be one day. When we can submit our will to him, when we can step back, and in, in times of fear and worry and whatever, we come to Jesus. We just have to go to a quiet place and just carve that time out just to sit with him. Give him your heart. There's no perfect words. Just give him your heart and say, say to him help me help me Lord make the right decision help me to know what to say or not to speak give me the grace not to lose my temper you have to understand something God wants it more than we do God wants us to be with him and be in the right way his way more than we can ever know so of course he will give us everything we need. There's no confusion that belongs to the evil one. There's only hope and love and trust for those who are in Christ Jesus. God bless us. God bless our families. Stand firm, stand strong, be tall in the Lord. You have everything you have. You have a, a full arsenal, the Eucharist and recon the reconciliation. God bless us all. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.